So we go no further on. Well, I want to let you know tonight that you have purpose in God. And that every now and again, when we're on this journey, we're on this book, our purpose gets lost. But I'm coming back to the Lord tonight that God has mercy for you. I thank God for mercy, even when purpose has been lost. So what is purpose? The purpose is the reason for which something is done or created for which something exists. So we all have purpose in life. And oftentimes with that purpose, we forget what God has ordained and designed for us. We forget, took this out just a minute, we forget what God has for us and what God has called us to. But we have a purpose. So we're here to sing the song, Lord, you are good. And it says the one part of it, and his mercy endures forever. That's what got me really excited when I said, I thank God for mercy. Because mercy is what takes me through. Mercy helps me to endure things when I don't even understand. When I feel like doing it in the time, I thank God for mercy. Many of us could have been dead, but it was about the mercies of God that we were not consumed. Enough to give God praise right there. Amen. So His mercy, His compassion, or unforgiveness shown towards someone who is with, within one's power to punish or harm them. Many of us should have been punished for some of the things that we did in our life. But God's mercy, He said, You didn't know much better. You, he did, you didn't know what you were doing. Even Jesus said, Father, forgive them. Oh, they know not what they do. So he has that same, that same mercy and that same compassion for you and I. That when we don't understand why we have done what we've done, sometimes we do understand. Sometimes we do some foolish stuff just because we think we're wrong. We say, I'm 21 and so, and we think we can just go ahead and do it. And then when our life turns top to top in, and our lives are shipwrecked, we be pray, God, oh, help me. God, I made a mistake. But his mercy, his mercy, Amen. so he talks to us in the word of God, in the book of Judges. He begins to talk to us about two characters that I love. As we begin to read the word of God, he talks about two gentlemen. In the fifth chapter, he talks about a man by the name of Joseph, Tola, T-O-L-A, and Jar, J-A-R. And I look at these two men, which is many like you and I. And we've gone through some things, and the Bible says that they were Barak, and they have been Deborah, the and they have been others that have came and have already preached the word of God to them, had already shown them the way, and had shown them how to endure. But the Bible says that they kept getting caught up in the same stuff. How many of us, even in this walk, we find ourselves sometimes embarrassed and making the same foolish mistakes? You don't have to raise your hand. You can just say it in your mind, yeah, I've done it. Yeah. We sit and we make the same silly mistakes. Despite the word of God being preached, despite it being written in the word of God, we still make the same mistakes. And then we expect something different to happen. That's foolish. We make the same mistakes. But we're yet expecting God to do something differently. You walk down this way and God said, go the other way. But you say, well, you know, I always go this way. I'm going to go this way anyway. And we override the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is our lead and our guide. It leads us into all truth. It leads us into all righteousness. And with Him we are nothing. That's why He tells us to acknowledge Him in all of our ways. How many of us do that? Some of us just do it. Think guilty? We don't even acknowledge. We just do it to be doing it. We do it because we can think. But a man thinking is not as a man that acknowledges God. When I acknowledge him, then I'm not thinking. When I don't acknowledge him, I'm not thinking. I'm just making some decisions. Well. But I need to think. I need to react upon God's word. If God tells me to wait, i got to wait. Right, Many times we don't want to wait. We think that this is my out right here. This is what I need to take right now, so I just do it. But he's telling us to wait on the Lord. And he said, in due season, there's a due season that's going to come. Look at somebody say, I got a due season coming. Come on, there's a due season that's going to come. But I've got to wait on this side while I'm waiting on my due season. Because it's going to come. Because I'm trusting God that my due season is going to come. But why 
while I'm waiting, I lose my purpose. My purpose gets lost. Because in the waiting, I can get to a place where I get disencouraged. The enemy brings disencouragement. Even if you experience it, the enemy, he brings some tests, he brings some trials to us. But one of the things you've got to realize that the tests and trials that we come, the Bible said they come to make us strong. That when the tests and trials come, we say, Lord, I thank you for the test. Lord, I thank you for the trial that I'm about to go through. Because if I'm living holy and righteous every day, the tests and the trials that I go through, God allowed it to happen. There's a song that says, expect, accept what God allows. We've got to learn how to accept the things that God allows to happen in our lives. For he says that I will not put no more on you than that which you're able to bear. If you're not able to endure it, he's not going to give it to you. But if God gives you the God, you must see something greater than me. I don't see it, but God, you see me stronger than I see myself. He sees us strong. You've got to realize your purpose and your value in here. Don't allow the enemy to cause you to become lost when you're reaching your destiny or purpose. you got a purpose because God is good. So Tola and Jar, despite Deborah, despite the Barak, and the others, the Bible goes on and talks about in the realm and around the realm and the realm and the six months or so, it talks specifically there were six or seven problems that had come and they had executed the one of them, but yet they get lost. They lost their purpose. They forgot what their purpose is. What is your purpose? It's a question. Do you know your purpose? Better yet, do you know your value? Because you have to realize that you have purpose and value in God. God doesn't call anyone that he doesn't see purpose or value in. If he calls you, that means he sees some value in you. If he calls you, that means he got some purpose in you. You have something to bring to the kingdom. And the enemy's going to try to destroy it and cut you off. But you've got to realize that I have been created to give God praise. God calls me. He called me for a month to come out for a month in and be ye separate. Sometimes we're wondering, but don't nobody want to help me. And why ain't nobody doing this? And I'm doing this. And ain't nobody. And I'm crying. But the Bible said, come out for a month and I be ye separate, said the Lord. In other words, he said, I want you to come out for a moment because when I bless you, when I bring you out, I want you to know that it was me and me alone. I want you to give credit to somebody else. Get to that place. We think that somebody else is going to help us. We get dependent on our jobs. We get dependent on the public system. We get dependent on a man. We get dependent on a woman. But my dependency should be on God. All right, all right, For he said, I hold it all in the palms of my hand. He said, I will never leave you. No one will forsake you. He said, I'll be a present, very present help. In the time of your trouble, in the time of what you're going through, I am your help. He said, I want to help you. I want to lead and I want to be your God. But there's some things that begin to happen in our lives. 15th verse, it says, But the Israelites said to the Lord, We have sinned. Do with us what you think best. I'd like to want you to read that out loud for us. The 15th verse, 10 to 15, because I think this is an important verse for us. Because sometimes we feel this way in our lives, and it says, And the children of Israel How many of us say this to ourselves sometimes, yes? Unto the Lord. Yes. We have sinned. Lord, I just made a mistake. But how many of us really say that? See, you got to be honest. And you've got to say, God, I've sinned. Yes. I've sinned against me and me alone. I didn't sin against my wife. I didn't sin against my husband. I didn't sin against my children. But God, I sinned against you. Yes? Right. Do that unto us. Look at this. What's the rest of this poison they said? Do unto us, God. Whatsoever. Yes? That seem as good unto you. That to be with some confidence. That knows that God is able to bring them out. See, to be able to say that is to know what your value is in God. To understand your purpose and what God do what you think that's best. Right. How many of your children, when you get to get ready to sit for them, 
Hallelujah. Well, go ahead, Daddy, do whatever you feel best. They ain't going to tell you that. But when I mean good, and when I mean righteous, and when I mean Jesus and Him alone, Lord, do what you feel is best, yes? That thing is good unto thee. Yes. Deliver us only. Look at this. God, I need you to deliver me. How many times do you say that to God? God, I need you to deliver me. God, I'm a wretch I've done. God, I yet have some insufficiencies in my life. God, I yet have some rough edges. I'm not as smooth as I could be. Yes, I've gotten smooth, but I'm still not that shiny, shiny smooth. And so, God, I need you to make me more me. God, I need you to do something. I need you to work on this old building, yes. We pray yes. this day. I pray to you this day, God, because I need you to do it. And he says, but wrap you up now. Right. That's the part I want to get to. Despite of what I'm going through, God, despite of what it looks like, God, I need you to throw a rope, a lifeline from heaven, I need to be rescued from where I'm at. Rescue me. Lord, I need you to rescue me. I need you to please rescue us. Rescue us. Because God, I've dealt with some stuff. I've done some stuff. I faced some things. I went through some things. But God, I need you to rescue me. I need you to bring me out. I need you to make a way. Your mercy. The mercies of God. The mercies of God. The mercies of God. When I lose my purpose, when I lose my focus, when it becomes the loss, God, I yet need your mercy. Because why you say, your mercy is going to follow me. God, I'm in the dark, but your goodness and mercy. God, I don't see my way, but there's some goodness and mercy. They're following me, they're leading me, they're taking me through. I'm thanking God for my goodness and my mercy. Yes, read. Yes. And they put away the strange God yes. from among them yes. and serve the Lord. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. You did got to put away your strange gods. The strange gods, G-O-D-S. Everything, anything that begins between you and God, you got to put it away. If, it, if it's man, i got to get rid of it. I heard Sister Father share a testimony that even before she got to the place, God was already doing some stuff. He will prepare our way. He prepares the stricken, the crooked way, and he said, and I'll make your pathway straight. But you've got to allow me, you've got to yield to my work. You've got to see my handiwork. You've got to see that this is the Lord's doing. And it's marvelous in my eyes. You gotta see that this is God that's bringing me out and making a way. Right yes, yes. This is the Lord's doing. Yes, yes. So He He started cleaning up some stuff, but He also charges you to get away and to get rid of your GRDS. Right. Well, what is it? I want God to take me to the next level. Amen. I want to go to the next threshold of the blessings that God has for me. I'm ready to go up the next step. But God has said, there's some G-O-D-S that are in the way. And he said, you got to get rid of them. you got to get rid of them. Well, what are those gods? Is it the money that you think you have? Is it the car? Is it my clothes? Is it that man? Is it that woman? Is it your children? What is it? Is it my job? Is it my health? People make all kinds of excuses as to why they can't serve God the way they should with their whole heart. When we have an opportunity to give God praise, when we have an opportunity to give God all the honor, we come up with excuses. We say, well, I would go to church tonight, but this just got off the too high. I'm not going out there and die. Go out there and have a huge stroke. Then we out in the yard. Yeah. We're going to the mall. We're doing this. We're doing that. We're going here. We're going there. But when it comes to the work that you hold us, he said, but when it comes to my work, when it comes to my Sabbath, we always make some excuse. That's why we lost and we lose our purpose. See, my 
purpose keeps me in line with God. My purpose, the reason why we get lost with our purpose is because we start converting to other things. We start, I'm going to say it, Holy Ghost, we start gravitating to our flesh. We start doing the things that make the flesh happy. Whatever satisfies the flesh is what we do. But God said, I want you to satisfy me. I want you to please me. I want you to think this is my beloved servant. And who I am will please. This is my son. But what makes him my son? What makes him my daughter? Because no matter what they're going through, they give me praise. No matter what's coming against them, they yet give me honor. So you don't even know what they're going through because why? They still do that crazy praise. That praise don't stop. Yeah, come on now, come on. It's a song that says, don't stop till you get enough. Oh, oh. Y'all heard the song. Jesus. <laughs> you heard the song. I can't stop giving God praise and glory until I get enough. And guess what? I may never get enough. Because the more I give of him, the more I want of him. The more he shows it down, the more I want of him. I want him to show it down on me. I want him to feel the anointing and the power of God. That when my back is against him, all I get is give him praise. I can get give him honor. I can get give him glory. Not because it's mercy. It's all about the mercy. It's nothing to do with me. No good have I done on this side. But it's God's mercy. He sees the best in me. He sees the best. You might not see the best in me. You might remember what I did last week. You might remember what I did last night. You might remember what I did last month. But God sees my future. And it's much better than my But it seems like my feet is all sinking. 
going to go through. And you've got to realize that the season to the Joanne is not going to last always. The season has an ending and a beginning. Anything that has a beginning has an ending. You've got to realize that there's going to be an end to this thing. It might not seem like it today, but there is an end that's going to come. And I'm going to come out as bitter gold. Because this season is only going to do for a night. Yes, yes, yes. That the trials of my faith. Well, they tell me what is the faith. Faith is a defeat that I cannot see. Faith is the unknown. Faith is not is the not the knowing what's going to happen. I got some hope. There's some substance in my faith. But I'm holding on to the faith of God. Well, what do I have to hold on? What is the faith of God? It's the word of God. If I don't have the word, I don't have faith. But Psalm 23 says for his grace and mercy. That's my faith. That's my faith. He, he says to me, 2 Corinthians 9 and 12, he talks about the significance, the significance of his faith. He lets me know that it's just his mercy endures forever. He said to me that his grace, that's the Holy Ghost, that his grace is sufficient. 2 Corinthians 12 and 9, that's the Holy Ghost. His grace is sufficient. That's what lets me know what I have. Yes, read. Finish. Being much more precious than of gold. Yes, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. The Lord of God, the book of Matthew, says, Lay not your treasure here on earth, where moth and mold, where moth do corrupt. But he said, Lay your treasures up in earth, where neither moth nor rust do it corrupt. We got all this gold. There used to be, years ago, there was an interview with Sammy Davis Jr. Some of you might remember he was on one of those shows. And anybody remember Sammy Davis Jr.? He used to wear all of this gold and all of this change. I remember him. And one day he was on an interview. And they said to Sammy, they said, you know, your gold looks wonderful. He said, the change is a reason of wonderful. He said, but they said to him, but do you have to wear it all at one time? We think that we have a lot of gold. We have a lot of worldly possessions. Then we have obtained something. We believe that if I have this benign my name, if I have this type of salary, if I live in this kind of house, if I wear this type of name clothing, if I drive this type of car, then I've obtained something. You've obtained nothing. The Bible said that stuff is going to pass away. That stuff would not get you to go. I'm not saying you can't have fine things. Don't get me wrong. Right. But when that becomes your purpose, you lose out on God. Yeah. Because if that, that becomes your God, anytime you've got to work hard to keep those things, you've got to begin to ask God, God, did you really give this to me? If I've got to work hard to maintain that lifestyle, you've got to say, well, God, did you really give this to me? You've got a question. You've got to begin to ask something.